For decades, the truth has been shrouded in secrecy, access restricted to only the highest echelons of power. But now, a veil has finally been lifted as a massive trove of classified documents and witness testimonies detailing countless close encounters are being exposed to the world. From high-ranking military personnel to distinguished scientists, we'll hear directly from those who have seen the undeniable evidence that we are not alone in the universe. Prepare to have your perception of reality permanently altered as we reveal the most credible and disturbing alien sightings ever documented. Sightings. Who better to trust about what's going on in space than people who have actually been to space before? That's right, numerous astronauts over the years have reported seeing things that they think might be UFOs. Buzz Aldrin was one of the astronauts aboard the Apollo 11, and during their journey, they all reported seeing flying objects. Of course, space debris exists, and it could just be some metal junk that was adrift in space. But then, why did they report that the objects appeared to be following them? When they thought that it might have just been a detached part of the rocket that was flying alongside them, they were informed that this piece was actually 6,000 miles away from them, and they definitely wouldn't have been able to see it from that far away. He also said that when they brought it up, they were briefed to not talk about what they had seen out in space. Well, the government can try all they want to cover things up, but eventually, word always gets out. Number 9. Paintings now let's go well beyond spaceships and astronauts and move into the far more distant past, because alien sightings certainly aren't a new thing and seem to have been around for centuries. One piece of evidence that people often cite is a painting titled The Madonna with Saint Giovannino. It was painted in the 15th century by Dominic Gerlando and appears to depict a UFO flying around in the background, its shape matching up with people's frequent depictions of flying saucers as being alien spacecrafts. There also appears to be beams of light coming out from the bottom of the ship, and this has led people to believe that it is unmistakably an alien craft, and not just something else placed up in the sky. And if you take a look at it, it does seem hard to believe that it could be anything else, as what other dark object would make sense to be floating in the sky like that? If you have any ideas, let me know what else you think it might be. Number 8. The Tic Tac UFO Back in 2004 on the coast of California, a US Navy pilot named David Fravor reported seeing something strange. In fact, he reported seeing something that was, quote, something not from this earth. They were about 60 to 100 miles off the coast of California, and he was leading a strike fighter squadron through some exercises when the incident occurred. He said that he saw a tic tac shaped vessel flying through the air at incredible speeds, but it wasn't just him who saw it. It was also reported by another flight crew who actually followed after the craft and even filmed it. While the footage was originally kept classified, it's now been made available to the public. The case was then published by the New York Times after the Pentagon acknowledged its Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, which is actually the Pentagon's own 21st century study of UFO sightings. Number 7. Wow! Exclamation point. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, otherwise known as SETI, is a group that, well, searches for extraterrestrial intelligence. In 1977, a large radio telescope outside of Ohio was scanning the skies on behalf of SETI when they picked up a signal that lasted for 72 seconds. The printouts of readings often included low numbers, which was typically just the background noise that the telescope picked up. But then a scientist noticed that there was a sudden string of letters as well as larger numbers. The letters went all the way up to U, which indicated a signal 30 times stronger than the typical background noise. Upon seeing these consecutive letters, which would represent a very strong signal and something potentially alien, he circled them and wrote the word WOW, followed by an exclamation point in bright red pen. To this day, we've never really seen anything else like it, and the extraordinary readout has yet to ever be duplicated. Number 6. Viking Mars Now let's get into some more science-y factual stuff. When people think of aliens, the term that might often come to mind is Martians, being attributed specifically to aliens that reside on the planet of Mars. NASA has sent a lot of things out there, and one expedition was referred to as Viking, them sending out little robots to take readings of the planet. One test that they performed was done on the soil, mixing soil with radioactive carbon-labeled nutrients to see if they would produce radioactive 
radioactive methane gas, this being a chemical sign of life on other planets. And it did, the test coming back with a positive result and finding organic molecules. But NASA just brushed it off I guess, because they said that the other experiments didn't end up with the same results so they just said it was a false positive. But one of the original scientists and others who have analyzed the data stand by their discovery saying that the other experiments had just been ill-equipped for performing the tests and finding the same results. Number 5. Martian Fossil Let's hear from NASA again, this event taking place in 1996 when they announced that they had found a Martian fossil. They said that they had found fossilized microbes within a lump of Martian rock, a meteorite that is theorized to have been blasted off the planet around 15 million years ago before finally winding up in Antarctica where it was discovered 12 years prior in 19. They analyzed it a lot, of course, and found organic molecules as well as small bits of the mineral known as magnetite, which can sometimes be found in Earth bacteria. Researchers also said that under an electron microscope, they were able to see traces of nanobacteria. So it seems like evidence is continuing to stack up that other planets are, or used to be, capable of sustaining life. And with a universe as infinitely large as ours, it's hard to say that it's impossible that life on other planets could ever exist. Number 4. The Super Hornet Let's now take a look at another piece of evidence that came out following the Pentagon's acknowledgement of their Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program. This took place back in 2015 on the East Coast and is another video of evidence discovered by the US Navy, this time by a FA-18 Super Hornet, a strike fighter that reaches speeds of up to 2,000 kilometers an hour. That's pretty fast. The pilots see the unidentified object moving at incredibly high speeds over the water and they struggle to keep up but are finally able to get a lock on it. When they do, they start cheering and one even says, what the F is that thing? They continue to follow it and seem to be unable to figure out what it possibly could be. This is another piece of evidence that had to go through a declassification process before it could be released to the public. Makes you wonder what other video footage and potential signs of alien life the government might be hiding from us in a file cabinet labeled classified. Number 3. Chicago O'Hare In November 2006 in Chicago, Illinois, airline staff and pilots alike were shocked by what they had witnessed. Multiple people reported seeing what they described as a flying saucer in the air. It was an overcast day and the UFO seemed to be just hovering over the Chicago O'Hare airport terminal. They then described how it seemed to shoot up into the air incredibly quickly, so fast that it punched a hole through the cloud cover above it. The FAA or Federal Aviation Administration described it as simply being a strange weather phenomenon and they wouldn't be investigating it, so don't worry about it. Of course, that's what they want us to think. But so many people at once reporting seeing a flying saucer shooting through the clouds doesn't really sound like a weather phenomenon to me. One flight traffic control official said, To fly 7 million light years to O'Hare and then have to turn around and go home because your gate was occupied is simply unacceptable. Number 2. SETI Readings now, now let's go back to the SETI project again. If you've somehow already forgotten by now, that refers to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Back in 2003, they were using a large telescope in Puerto Rico to re-examine around 200 sections of the sky that had all previously shown unexplained radio signals. All of the signals had disappeared except for one which had actually become stronger. It came from a spot between the constellations Pisces and Aries where there aren't any known stars or planets. The signal was emitting the frequency for hydrogen, the most common element which both absorbs and emits energy. Some astronomers believing that this is the most likely element aliens might use to send a message to us for this reason. The signal from this spot in space has now been recorded a total of three times and has left many people wondering if it is truly a signal coming from aliens. Number 1. The Phoenix Lights On March 13th in 1997, an event took place that was referred to as Lights Over Phoenix or the Phoenix Lights Phenomenon. On this day, hundreds of witnesses reported seeing otherworldly lights across Arizona, Nevada, and northern Mexico. There were two main events, the first being a giant V-shaped aircraft that had five lights on it, maybe thrusters, though it apparently didn't make any sound. Then later that night, there were a series of red and orange lights in the sky that did 
didn't appear to move at all. And while air traffic control employees could see the lights in the sky, they couldn't see them on their radars. The governor of the state of Arizona at the time said, I'm a pilot and I know just about every machine that flies. It was bigger than anything I've ever seen. It remains a great mystery. And it really does remain a mystery. To this day, nobody seems to have any real or solid explanation for what the large spacecraft and the lights might have been. It was said that it was a military flare drop, but this came after their original statement that they had had no planes in the air. And even a recreation of the event didn't line up with what people had seen. Flares flicker and burning out after only a few seconds. I have an explanation though, it was aliens. Starting off this countdown, we have the New Jersey Turnpike. On July 14, 2001, tons of individuals stopped in awe as they saw strange orange and yellow lights in a V formation in the sky. It was just after midnight when these mysterious lights appeared. They were so strange that a number of drivers stopped along the highway to look at the sky. Apparently, these lights lasted for around 15 minutes before disappearing. Daniel Tarrant, who worked for the police department, was one of the many witnesses of this bizarre event. And apparently over a dozen calls were made to the local police department reporting these lights. It definitely freaked a lot of people out. Now what's even freakier is that air traffic controllers said that it's impossible for airplanes or jets or space flights to have made that light. So that's just ruled completely out. To this day, we still don't know what the mystery light show was, but of course, it's probably aliens. Coming in at number nine, we have the Pentagon footage. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. So in April of last year, the Pentagon released footage of what they said was an unidentified flying object. These videos were recorded back in 2004 and 2015, but were only finally released when they thought it was safe to do so. So in one of the videos, you can see what appears to be a UFO flying in the sky. It was taken by naval aviators and it shows some sort of objects moving through the sky. In the video, you can hear the pilots are in shock at what they're seeing. In fact, one of the pilots that witnessed this phenomena and captured it on video told CNN that the disc moved in ways he couldn't explain. Apparently one second it was there, and then next thing you know, it disappeared. He said, and I quote, as I got close to it, it rapidly accelerated to the south and disappeared in less than two seconds. This was extremely abrupt, like a ping pong ball bouncing off a wall. It would hit and go the other way. Now that's pretty creepy if you ask me. Then play 18 seconds to 30 seconds. we have the O'Hare Airport Saucer. On November 6th of 2006, 12 employees at the O'Hare International Airport in Chicago witnessed a saucer-shaped craft outside of the airport. Several other people outside of the airport saw this as well. It occurred at around 4.15 p.m. that day. Witnesses say that the UFO hovered in the sky for about five minutes before shooting upward. When it did this, it created a big hole in the clouds. Airport employees claim that this was no way an airplane. The object was dark gray in color and around 6 to 24 feet in diameter. Some say it looked like a frisbee, was just spinning in the sky. But others claim it wasn't rotating, it was just hovering. What's even weirder is how the object was very quiet. Again, to this day, no one knows what on earth it was that they saw. Maybe because it wasn't from Earth. And at number seven, we have the Maury Island incident. This one is crazy. Like, I don't even know what to believe anymore. So on June 27th, 1947, a man named Harold Dahl, his young son, and his dog went out on a conservation mission. While out on the fishing boat, they saw six donut-shaped aircrafts hovering in the air above them. The crafts then started dropping weird molten-type waste onto the lake. He described it as if it was raining lava or white metal. This ended up hitting his son's arm and the dog. The son was badly injured and sadly the dog didn't survive. After the incident, obviously word got out and then some man approached Harold saying that he also witnessed something exactly like that. But then, Harold was also approached by another guy who he called, like, you know, the men in black, and was told not to talk about the incident. So again, 
pretty freaking creepy. In our sixth spot, we have the Westall UFO. Now, this next UFO sighting was actually talked about on Magellan TV's documentary called Westall 66 Suburban UFO Mystery, another great documentary. So, on April 6th of 1966 in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, a weird UFO was seen flying in the air. This was seen by more than 200 students and teachers at a nearby school. It happened at around 11 a.m. that day. The students and teachers were outside playing sports when they saw this saucer type object in the sky. It scared a lot of the students and stunned the teachers. They described it as being a silver shiny aircraft with a purple hue to it. Others say it was more green in color. But it was twice the size of a family car. On top of that, some say they saw one disc, while others say that they saw three. This incident was explored by the Victorian Flying Saucer Research Society and Phenomena Research Australia, but they haven't been able to rationalize it. To this day, it's considered one of Australia's major unexplained UFO cases. There's way more to this case than I have time to talk about, so if you want to learn more, then check out the documentary. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Stephenville sightings. Stephenville is a small and quiet town in Texas. Nothing too crazy happens there, it's mainly just known for its dairy farms. But on January 8th, 2008, something quite strange happened that rocked that quiet town. On this day, dozens of residents saw white lights above Highway 67. A local pilot claimed that the lights, and I quote, spanned about a mile long and a half a mile wide and traveled about 3,000 miles per hour. The lights were accompanied with silence. Now, the US Air Force did claim that it was just a plane flying in the area, but the residents aren't buying this excuse. They said, and I quote, what they saw was too technologically advanced for current human abilities. Coming in at number four, we have the USS Unknown Craft. In 2004, a Navy missile cruiser picked up some weird radar signals coming from an unknown craft. The cruiser was sailing off the coast of Southern California when this happened. It was coming from an object in the sky. Then apparently at some point the crew saw an oval shaped object drop into the water. The water began to churn around it. Then a few seconds later the object shot back out of the water and accelerated away. They claim it moved more than three times the speed of sound and more than twice the speed of fighter jets. In our third spot, we have Kenneth Arnold. On June 24th, 1947, a private pilot named Kenneth Arnold witnessed something pretty creepy while out flying. So on that day, Kenneth was out flying looking for a US Marine Corps airplane that crashed near Mount Rainer. There was a reward for anyone that could locate the plane. But while out looking, he saw nine bright lights emitting from a shiny UFO. He claims it was traveling at around 1200 miles per hour. Of course, if only Arnold Arnold had seen this thing, then people probably wouldn't believe him. But he wasn't the only one to witness it. A man named Fred Johnson also saw the lights and object. That same day, around the same time, he saw the object through his telescope. He also claimed that the object, whatever it was, interfered with his compass. Arnold was just going to dismiss what he saw as a mirage until Johnson came forward explaining he saw it too. In our second spot, we have the Flatwoods Monster. On September 12, 1952, seven individuals and a dog witnessed a UFO. And then they saw what they believed to be an alien. So on this day, six boys aged 10 to 16, a mom and a dog were at the park playing. While doing so, they saw a pulsing red light flash across the sky and then crash down. Three of the boys ran to go get one of the boys' mom to then go check it out. The dog followed. When they neared the area where the thing crashed, they saw a 10 foot tall Frankenstein like monster. That's how they described it. Even the dog was afraid and ran away from it. Apparently this monster had blood red eyes, a green face, and it glowed. It even had claws. One of the boys was so afraid he actually peed his pants. I mean, it would sound fishy if it was just a group of boys that claimed to see a UFO and alien, but then like the mom saw it too and verifies that this story is true. And in our number one spot we have the Berkshires UFO. This 
undoubtedly is the most mysterious and scariest UFO sighting and encounter on this list. On September 1st, 1969, something happened that changed the lives of multiple people in Berkshire County forever. So on that day, a bunch of people claimed to have seen a number of strange lights. Some people even claim that they were abducted by this bright light or randomly time passed and they don't know what happened for the hours lost. One of the people that witnessed this was Melanie Kirchdorfer. That night, her and her family went to a Dairy Queen to get ice cream. Then they went to a nearby lake. While her father backed into the parking lot at the lake, a strange aura came around the car. They don't remember much after that, but Melanie remembers being levitated and then being on a spaceship. Another man named Tom Warner remembers being on the spaceship as well and remembers seeing Melanie beside him. Before that, they never even knew each other. That same night, Jane and her friend Mary were driving home when they saw several bright lights in front of them. Her and a couple of the other cars actually pulled over because the lights were so bright that they couldn't see where they were driving. When they got out of their car, they saw a huge object floating over the road in front of them. And many other people also shared several stories from that night as well. So it's quite creepy that that many people came forward, all random individuals with no relation to each other, but had such similar stories. Number 10, UAP report. Alien fans and skeptics alike were pretty shocked when just a few months ago, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, said that they believed in aliens. Well, actually, they said they were going to be investigating unidentified flying objects, but close enough. While some people did believe that this was NASA saying, hey, we believe in aliens, it was actually them announcing they were going to launch a study into UAPs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, because I guess they're just too good to say UFO. The scientist coordinating the study said, over the decades, NASA has answered the call to tackle some of the most perplexing mysteries we know of, and this is no different. In the report, they said that a good chunk of confirmed unidentified objects seem to show evidence that they were made using advanced technology that humans just don't have yet. Number 9. Injuries A Freedom of Information Act request caused 1,500 pages of UFO reports and evidence to be declassified and leaked to the public. And what the pages contained was pretty shocking for those who read it. A percentage of the pages included information of how people who reported seeing UFOs and aliens had been legitimately physically affected, real physical evidence that something unexplained had happened to them. Some of the reports included things like burns, which could have been caused by the jets of a UFO or potential face-to-face -face alien interference. Bafflingly, they also confirmed that women who had come into contact with aliens shortly fell mysteriously pregnant after the event, with no explanation as to why they were suddenly with child. Yes, we all know by now how mom and daddy make babies, but that apparently wasn't a factor in these cases. Alien babies potentially on the way. Number 8. FLIR Alongside these 1500 documents, three separate videos were released that appeared to show UFOs being spotted by the United States military, so let's take a look. The first is titled FLIR and was originally filmed back in 2004 when the USS Nimitz was flying off the coast of Southern California. There had apparently already been an unidentified aircraft in the area for up to a week before the video was filmed. Off the coast, they spotted a large oval shaped object, estimating it to be about 40 feet long and white in color. Four people on the craft saw the object for a running total of about five minutes, although the video is only just over a minute. They were able to track it using their advanced infrared camera and due to the object's shape, they nicknamed it the Tic Tac. All these videos to this day have no real explanation for what the UFOs actually were. Number seven, Gimbal. Next up on the list we have the video titled Gimbal, which was leaked alongside the last one I just talked about. This one's different because we can hear the people in the jet reacting to what they're seeing. They use a similar infrared camera and follow the object that was flying over the east coast. At first they comment that it might be some kind of drone, but then note that it is fighting against incredibly strong winds and appearing to not be affected by it at all. They even comment that there are other unidentified identified crafts in the area, but we don't actually see them as it's locked onto the target. 
What's interesting about this one, as the people in the video point out, is that it moves in an incredibly strange fashion. Appearing to rotate and move around despite the heavy winds it's apparently fighting against. My favorite part of this is that there's one guy calmly stating facts about it while the other cusses and yells in excitement. Is that a f***ing drone dude? Number 6. Go Fast the third and final leaked video is probably the best of the bunch, as the video starts before they have managed to lock onto the target and you can see it moving. The video is pretty correctly titled Go Fast because this thing is moving incredibly fast, like definitely faster than anything else that could have been an easy explanation. It's zipping over the top of the water as they try to get their camera to lock onto it, and when they finally do they start cheering because of just how difficult it was was due to how fast the object was moving. Their comments are a mix of excitement and confusion in regards to what they've managed to find, saying look at that thing fly while also going what the f is that thing. People often like to write off UFOs as some sort of secret military practice vessels or training project, so what can it be when the military itself doesn't know what they saw? Number 5. Pentagon Report In May of this year, the Pentagon appeared on a panel where they discussed UFOs, and they revealed just how much information they have about the situation. They said that there are around 400 separate reports of unidentified flying objects coming from military military personnel. So while we do have the three leaked videos, there are likely even more locked up in a safe somewhere that offer convincing evidence of the existence of aliens. The deputy director of naval intelligence said, We've seen an increasing number of unauthorized and or unidentified aircraft or objects, and military control training areas and training ranges and other designated airspace. Reports of sightings are frequent and continuous. Well, it definitely sounds Sounds like he's trying to sweep it under the rug as someone just like flying a drone illegally onto a military base or something. I think it's safe to say the military have the resources to know if it were something as simple as that. So their confusion and uncertainty makes it seem more and more like aliens are among us. Number 4. Live Stream In 2016, an incident occurred during NASA's live feed from a camera mounted on the International Space Station that pointed towards the Earth. You can see the Earth's curve, and one viewer noticed that for a short moment, a massive bright object can be seen falling towards the planet. But as quickly as it comes, it's gone as the live feed conveniently cuts out and experiences technical difficulties. The video was posted to YouTube and people immediately started theorizing that NASA had intentionally cut the live feed at this moment to cover up the fact that this bright shape was a UFO, or at least something alien in origin. Many people noted how suspicious this was and started calling out NASA for their actions, while other people were saying that it was just a meteor or some hunk of space junk. A spokesperson for NASA said that the cameras are controlled automatically, and it had simply passed out of range causing the video to be cut off, but that's just what they want you to think. Number 3. Alien Junk an astrophysicist from Harvard wrote a book that was titled Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, and it was about how he believed that an object that passed through the solar system in 2017 was actually a piece of alien technology, bringing forward the theory that NASA is actually just ignoring real evidence of alien existence because they're just brushing it off as some random space junk. Whether they believe it really is space junk or they're just trying to make us think that that's what it is. The object was long and not shaped like any known comet we've ever seen before. It also apparently accelerated away from the sun and he believes it ended up in our solar system accidentally thanks to aliens, saying, a buoy, a grid of pods for communication, other intelligent living organisms, defunct technology or discarded technological trash. These are all plausible explanations. Number 2. Buzz Aldrin Buzz Aldrin was one of a handful of astronauts who were aboard the Apollo 11, the first space flight that put humans on the moon with one small step for man. During their journey, however, they saw more than just the moon. Apparently, they may have seen a UFO. 
They reported seeing large objects that appeared to follow alongside them. It was confirmed not to be the upper stage of the rocket that would have been detached, as this was 6,000 miles away from them at the time. The event was kept under wraps and nobody talked about it until it was brought up years later, sweeping it under the rug as simply a panel that had disconnected from the ship. But again, that's just what they want you to think. The claims coming from a senior NASA scientist who said he had just called up Buzz on the phone and he had agreed. Did you really talk to him on the phone, senior NASA scientist? Did you really? Number one, ISS report. All right, this one's not actually NASA because it actually comes from a Russian astronaut aboard the International Space Station, and I'm just gonna count it because it's a pretty cool video. He was on board the ISS using his camera to record the southern lights, which are the same as the northern lights, but in the south. It's a time-lapse recording, and for a brief moment, you can see a line of large bright lights moving across the sky. In the tweet the astronaut posted, he referred to them as space guests saying that while it was only a few seconds in the time lapse, it was actually around 52 seconds in real time. Some people suggest that it may have been some kind of meteor or satellite, but I'm actually a licensed professional and I say that it was aliens. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the pink see-through Fantasia. While the name of these guys would kind of make someone think that they're like cool and sexy, in reality, these guys are Definitely not that. The pink see-through Fantasia is a sea cucumber normally found about one and a half miles deep in the waters of the Celebus Sea, which is located in the Western Pacific. These guys were actually discovered only quite recently in 2007, but there's something about them that might either prove that they've been here for much longer, or maybe they had quite the chance to develop their survival skills somewhere else. These guys are able, when frightened, to emit a light through bioluminescence in order to scare off potential predators. This animal of course gets its name through its see-through appearance and pink color, and this is what makes their intestines completely visible to the outside world. In our number 9 spot today we have the Vampire Squid. The scientific name of these creatures directly translates into Vampire Squid from Hell, and they get their name from their fantastic red color, their glowing eyes, and their webbing in between the arms, which appears as a sort of cloak. Well, that's where the vampire part comes from, the squid part is a little trickier. While the Vampire Squid shares quality with both squid and octopuses, they don't actually belong to either of these families, and they are instead in a category of their own entirely. In the past, there were more members in this same family, but the vampire squid is now the last remaining member, which is why they are often referred to as a living fossil. In our number 8 spot today, we have the leafy sea dragon. These are a creature that are definitely one of the coolest looking on this list. A lot of weird sea creatures tend to look absolutely horrifying, but these ones are most definitely a little easier on the eyes. These fish belong to the family that includes pipefish and seahorses, but they are the only species in their genus. The leafy sea dragon is most commonly found along the southern and western coasts of Australia, and they are very obviously named from their appearance. It would seem as though these guys would use these leafy protrusions to help propel them through the water, but that is not the case, and instead they are merely used as camouflage. These sea dragons are usually quite solitary, but they also have an incredible sense of direction. It was once thought that they didn't travel very far, but it was later discovered that they actually travel several hundred miles, but use this keen sense of direction to return to the same spots, which is actually very cool. In our number 7 spot today, we have the fossil monster. Okay, so as the name would suggest, this isn't a still living creature, and instead is one that has been found in a fossil. These fossils pertaining to one particular creature have only been found in one spot, and they come from a time about 300 million years ago, when what is now Illinois was covered in water. Found in the Maison Creek fossil beds, they have found the fossils of an animal called Tully Monstrum gregarium, or simply the Tully Monster. What is so unique about these fossils from this creature, other than the fact that it lived 300 million years ago, which is wild, is that attempts at classifying this creature have been highly controversial. Interpretations of this fossil have been likened to mollusks, arthropods, cononodonts, worms, and vertebrates. It is super weird that 
that this creature, with fossils located in only one place from 300 million years ago, is super hard to classify because it has a bunch of different attributes that could be placed in a number of different animal classes. I'm not saying it's an alien, I'm just saying it's a little mysterious. In our number six spot today, we have the mimic octopus. Octopuses in general are all insane. Like, I fully believe that basically all of them could be from another planet because I just don't understand how they look like that, how they're all so smart, and how they can individually use their little suckers. I don't know. They're just fascinating creatures, and the mimic octopus is no exception. These guys are normally found in the Indo Pacific, and they get their name from their unbelievable ability to use chromatophores to blend in with their surroundings or perhaps to impersonate another marine animal. Most of the time, they use this ability to defend themselves from predators, but they can also be seen using it to help them catch their prey. For example, they might appear as a crab's potential mate before they chop down on their certainly confused and surprised tasty snack. In our number five spot today, we have the peacock mantis shrimp. I mean, Need I say more? These guys can be found in the Indian and tropical western Pacific oceans, and man are they a wondrous sight. They get their peacock name from their fantastic colors, but despite how awesome these candy colored shrimp are to look at, this actually isn't what they are known best for. These guys are actually best known for their ability to quickly punch with their front two appendages, and despite their tiny size, don't underestimate their power. Apparently, this punch is one of the fastest movements in the entire animal kingdom. In fact, it's so fast that it causes enough power to be able to break the glass wall of an aquarium. I mean, they definitely know how to pack a punch. Luckily, they usually save this sort of thing to break open mollusks and help them get through a crab's armor. In our number four spot today, we have the colossal squid. The colossal squid is a creature that is not to be confused with the giant squid, which is similar but slightly smaller. These guys live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica. This creature lives up to its name as it reaches an average of 40 six feet in size, and it weighs around 500 kilograms, with the females being the largest of the species. They also have large tentacles equipped with suckers that have little razor hooks on them to better latch onto its prey, so let's hope it's not you. Its diet mainly consists of large fish, such as the seven foot Patagonian toothfish. It also includes small ones, and sometimes they even consume their own kind. But They've also been known to try and consume larger prey, like sperm whales, who often have been seen with scars attributing to the battles they must have faced. They're colossal, they're scary, and they're ambitious. What more could you want from a sea monster? Only two specimens have ever been collected, with a second being found recently in 2014. If you ever wondered where the tales of the Kraken came from, you now know. In our number three spot today, we have the predatory tunicate. Okay, say what you want about any other fish on this list today, but these guys definitely look the most like aliens, and honestly, they are the epitome of deep sea weirdness. The predatory tunicate is like the Venus flytrap of the deep sea. They start out life kind of like tadpoles, and then they swim until they find their perfect spot, either along a canyon wall or right on the sea floor. Once they've found their spot, they plant themselves in place using a natural adhesive that they produce. Once planted, they will undergo a huge change and this is where they will stay for the rest of their lives. They are super picky about where exactly they make their homes because it will be where they stay and because they need to make sure that both the chemicals in the water in that area as well as the temperature of the water is just right. Unfortunately, if these guys get moved from the location they choose to make their home, they will die, so it's imperative that they're just left alone. They basically wait for food to drift on by, and like a Venus flytrap, when they get their meal, their mouths will snap shut until they're done digesting. The predatory tunicate is a point of study in the medical world because they actually have been known to help with some more serious medical conditions, which is always an incredible thing. In our number two spot today, we have the sea pen. Okay, this thing under the sea looks a lot like a pen, right? Well, the orange sea pen is not a pen, and it's not even a sort of plant. It's actually a colony of animals that can withdraw into the soft sediment wherever it is found. So I just heard of these guys today, but it turns out they are a lot more common, and there are actually about 300 species of sea pens. To make them even more out of this world, it is said that with a little stimulation, they glow with a green sort of light. So. 
I don't know about you, but that's the most alien thing I've ever heard. In our number one spot today, we have the Yeti crab. Okay, I'll be honest. These guys are on this list today because they look so incredibly strange, but they are also remarkably unique. These furry clawed crabs, yes, you heard me. They were first discovered 5,000 feet deep in the ocean near a hydrothermal vent. They were found just south of Easter Island, and when found, it was realized that they were not only in a new genus of their own, but a new family as well. Because of the deep, dark, and extreme environment that these guys live in, not much about them is known at this point in time. It is believed that they likely don't have sight, and it's also thought that they might have a sort of bacteria that resides in its furry claws, which allows it to detoxify the food that is coming from the vent. Listen, the ocean is scary, but it's also unbelievable and truly incredible. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Valensol incident. Everywhere has gotta have their Roswell incident, and this one is said to be France's. This sighting was made by a man named Maurice Mass who was a French farmer, and it took place in July of 1965. One day, before starting work while outside smoking, Maurice witnessed an object coming out of the sky and landing in his lavender field about 200 feet away from where he was. He was, of course, frustrated at someone landing in his field, and figured that it was likely a helicopter that made some sort of unauthorized landing, but as he got closer, things took quite the turn. He realized this was no helicopter, and instead was some sort of oval-shaped structure that was standing on four legs. In front of the strange craft were two figure, just under four feet tall. He explained that they were making a sort of grumbling sound and included a brief description of these creatures before explaining that one of them took out a pencil-like device and pointed it at him, which left him completely stuck in his tracks, just frozen in time. As he was stuck there, the creatures got back on their craft and took off, and after about 20 minutes, he finally regained his ability to move. Here's the thing. To me, this just sounds like a fantastical story, but there was some kind of physical evidence left behind that I, and many other can't quite figure out an explanation to. Basically, the craft did end up leaving a mark. There was a hole and a lot of moisture left over from where the craft was. Like I mentioned, this was in the middle of a lavender field. Soon after this, this area became really hard, almost like concrete, and definitely not like the soil everywhere else in the field, and all of the plants around this area started to die. Analysis of the soil revealed that there was a higher amount of calcium in the soil at the landing site than there was anywhere else. This definitely shows that there was some kind of unusual event, but could Marie be telling the truth? In our number 9 spot today, we have the Broadhaven UFO sightings. This UFO sighting took place all the way back in 1977, and it started when an entire class of children all claimed to see some sort of object flying through the sky. The children rightfully were confused and excited over what they had seen, but of course the teachers and adults around them believed it was just their wild imaginations making it up. This is when they decided to split all of the children up and have them draw what it is that they saw. While there, of course, were variations in all of the children's drawings, they all were basically the same thing, which begs the question, did they all really see this thing then? The children weren't the only ones who saw it either. Shortly after their sighting, other local residents began to explain that they had seen something strange flying through the air, including one hotel owner. One of the things that really gets people about this case, and these sightings in particular, is that all these different people claimed to have seen something at that time, and even though it's been almost half a century, not a single one of them has ever said that it was a hoax, or that they were lying about what they saw. They all have the same story they did the day that it happened. In our number 8 spot today, we have Project Grudge Report 13. Okay, so I've read quite a few different UFO sighting stories and stories of alleged alien abductions, and this is fully one of the most terrifying that I have ever heard of. So basically, the story starts off in March of 1956, when Air Force Sergeant Jonathan P. Lovett was assisting Major William Cunningham in the White Sands Missile Testing Grounds near Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. The pair were out searching for debris from a recent rocket test, when Major Cunningham heard a loud scream. His first thought was that Sergeant Lovett had been bitten by a snake, so he went around to help aid his partner, when he allegedly saw something he never expected. He recounted seeing the sergeant being dragged away by some sort of long serpentine arm that had wrapped around his legs. Whatever this creature was, it was connected to a hovering silver disc that was in the air about 15 feet away. The Major stood there in horror as he watched this creature and the sergeant retreat into the craft, which then rose vertically into the sky. Of course, he radiated for help, and while he was taken to the hospital for observation, search teams were sent out immediately. It wouldn't happen until three days later that they would find the body of Sergeant Lovett, only 10 miles from the site where he was said to have disappeared from. The autopsy performed on him later also only raised more questions than answers, as his body was severely harmed. So, of course, there was an investigation that happened, and many people claim this investigation was detailed in a 600-page document labeled Project Grudge Report 13, but the problem with this is that no official 
information on Report 13 exists, and the US government denies its very existence. Though Grudge Reports 1 through 12 have been declassified, along with Report 14, no official mention or accounting of Report 13 exists, and the story solely relies on secondhand accounts of the horrible incident. In our number 7 spot today, we have Leveland. This incident took place in 1957 in Leveland, Texas, and actually was the inspiration for a scene in the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind. In the real life incident, dozens of citizens from across the city began individually reporting seeing a rocket or a strange set of lights or some sort of unidentified object, but that wasn't it. Whatever these citizens were seeing was also reportedly interfering with their vehicles as well. Engines were just suddenly dying out and lights were cutting off. If this happened to just one or two, this could have been some kind of strange coincidence, but it was way too many instances. Something else definitely had to have been at play. The authorities at first thought that the reports were a hoax until they too saw the strange lights as they began to investigate. This is where Project Blue Book came in to investigate and they came up with quite the conclusion. They claimed that what had happened here was simply just a case of an electrical storm and ball lightning that caused the lights and the mechanical malfunctions. That's super reasonable, but the catch with this explanation is that there were no reported thunderstorms in the area that night at all. I'm just saying, something here clearly isn't adding up quite right. In our number 6 spot today we have the Air Force Disappearance. On the night of November 23rd, 1953 near the Canadian US border, the United States Air Defense Command noticed a blip on their radar where there shouldn't have been one. This was showing that there was some sort of unidentified object that was in restricted airspace over Lake Superior. In response to this, an F-89C Scorpion jet was sent to investigate with two crew members. First Lieutenant Felix Moncla was piloting the craft while second lieutenant Robert Wilson was observing the radar. Once in the air, the pair had trouble tracking the object, which kept changing its course, which then led to ground control helping to direct them. The jet pursued the unknown object for 30 minutes as it closed in on it at 500 miles per hour. After a while, the two blips on the radar, one being the unknown object and the other being the investigating jet, converged into one point, and then suddenly, the radar return from the F-89 simply just disappeared from ground control's radar scope. Shortly after this, the radar blip that was from the unidentified object also veered off and then vanished. The men who were sent to investigate in the jet never returned from the mission and there was never any wreckage found signifying an accident despite extensive searches. The men and the jet just disappeared completely. It is said that the explanations for the disappearance that have been released throughout the years have changed and flip flopped in what they say happened so at this point no one has any idea what truly happened here. In our number 5 spot today we have the Roswell incident. This whole rigmarole started in 1947 when some sort of a crash took place near a ranch in Roswell, New Mexico. Shortly after this, the Roswell Army Airfield released a statement saying that they had recovered a flying disc from the ranch, but the Army quickly retracted the statement and said that it wasn't that, but instead was a conventional weather balloon. This was a little sketchy, but most people just let it slide until the 1970s. What happened in the 70s is that a retired lieutenant colonel began to speak out. In an interview with a UFO researcher, he said that the weather balloon story was a cover-up and that alien remains were actually recovered from the crash site. There were both first and second hand witnesses who claimed that not only were there at least one, but possibly more alien spacecrafts that had crashed at the scene, but also that extraterrestrial remains were also recovered by the military who then began to engage in a cover up. In 1994, the story changed from a weather balloon to nuclear test surveillance balloon from Project Mogul and it was stated that the stories of the alien bodies were probably just test dummies that had been dropped from high altitudes. I'm not gonna lie, this whole thing sounds a little sketchy. I obviously wasn't there, so I can't say for certain what happened, but someone is definitely lying about it. In our number 4 spot today we have the Foo Fighters. On a late November evening in 1944, nearing the end of the Second World War, Lieutenant Fred Ringwald was riding as observer in a night fighter that was being piloted by Lieutenant Ed Schluter with Lieutenant Donald J. Myers on radar. The men were in the Rhine Valley, which sits north of Strasbourg on the French and German border, when Lieutenant Ringwald saw something. He said, quote, I wonder what those lights are over there in the hill. When the rest turned to look, they saw 8 to 10 fiery orange glowing lights. They checked with the ground radar, but nothing was registering. The men thought that there was a chance that these lights could be some kind of air weapon, so they turned themselves to be ready to fight, only to have the lights suddenly vanish. The three men who experienced the strange lights at first didn't tell anyone about what they saw because they feared being ostracized by those around them. This all changed, however, when stories of similar sightings began
began to spread through their unit. As it would turn out, many other pilots and flight crews experienced these same orange glowing lights, and one pilot even experienced a strange cigar shaped flying object in this scenario. In this instance, the UFO was described as quote, a wingless cigar shaped object glowing red just a few yards off the plane's wingtip. Lieutenant Krasny, justifiably spooked, instructed the pilot to attempt evasive maneuvers, but the glowing object stayed right next to the jet for several minutes before it quote, flew off and disappeared. Throughout the years, the explanations for what these people saw have ranged from things like combat fatigue to the works of Nazi astrophysicists. So at this point, what exactly happened here remains quite a mystery. In our number three spot today, we have the Shag Harbor incident. This UFO encounter is often referred to as Canada's Roswell, so I was shocked that I hadn't heard of it before. Basically, this incident took place on October 4th, 1967, when an unknown object crashed into the water near Shag Harbor, which is a tiny town in Nova Scotia. There were at least 11 people who witnessed this object as it crashed, and many people claimed to have heard a whistling sound, followed by a loud bang when the crash took place. The witnesses that claimed to have seen the UFO were all doing a bunch of different things at the time. One couple was just sitting on their porch, but the two witnesses that really get me are a flight pilot and a ship captain. On Air Canada Flight 305, First Officer Robert Ralph pointed out to Captain Pierre Charbonneau that there was something strange out the left side of the aircraft. They reported an object tracking along on a parallel course a few miles away and described it as a brilliantly lit rectangular object with a string of smaller lights trailing it. Shortly after they noticed it, there was a large but silent explosion near the unknown object, and then two minutes later, there was a second explosion, but this one faded to a blue cloud. As for the ship captain, Captain Leo Howard Mercy saw four blips on his DECA radar that were totally stationary. This led to him looking up to the sky, and this is when he saw four bright objects sitting in a rectangular formation about 28 kilometers from the vessel's window. He wasn't the only one who saw it on board. The entire crew of nearly 20 fishermen stood on deck and watched. A man named Lori Wickens was another one of the witnesses, and he and some friends ended up calling the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, because they saw a huge object floating in the Atlantic Ocean about a thousand feet offshore. This is all super weird, and not only the RCMP, but also the Royal Canadian Navy and the Royal Canadian Air Force became involved in the investigation, but nothing was ever recovered or found. But it was also revealed that all commercial, private, and military aircrafts along the eastern seaboard were totally accounted for. So what could these witnesses have all seen? Since they never officially identified what it was, in the official Government of Canada documents, it is listed as a UFO. In our number two spot today, we have the Betty and Barney Hill case. The Betty and Barney Hill case is definitely one of the most famous UFO abduction stories ever told, and it absolutely has some pretty compelling components. Basically, the story goes that the two were driving on a road in New Hampshire one night on the way home from a trip the pair had taken. Before they got into the car on their way home, they were in a diner and figured that if they really pushed through, they could beat the wind and rains from an approaching hurricane. It was 10 p.m. when they left the diner and they figured by around 2 a.m., 3 a.m. latest, they'd arrive home. As they drove, out of nowhere, a bright light started to follow them. Suddenly, they arrive home and it's somehow daylight and their clothes are dirty and ripped and their watches had stopped working. This is all jarring enough, but neither Betty nor Barney could figure out what happened. They were both missing time. Later, during a session with a psychiatrist, they were able to recall being touched by aliens during their abduction. Project Blue Book would come to investigate their claims, and while people remain skeptical, no one has ever been able to debunk their story. This officially went on to become the first ever widely publicized abduction story, and to this day, people still debate what really happened to the Hills. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have the Westall Incident. Taking it back to 1966, we have the largest mass UFO sighting in Australia that, at the time, was largely ignored. This incident took place when over 300 students and staff members of a school in Melbourne all witnessed multiple UFOs silently flying through the air before they landed in a nearby field. While there's been a ton of speculation about this incident in the many years it's been, one witness account stands out among the rest, and that is the account made by the science teacher from the school, Andrew Greenwood. He was alerted to the UFO event by a hysterical student, and when he went outside to see for himself, everything changed. Previously a skeptic of UFO stories, Andrew's mind was abruptly changed when he saw, as he described it, a round silver object about the size of a car with a metal rod sticking up in the air. He went on to explain that suddenly five planes came and surrounded the object, all while more people were gathering to watch. He called what happened next the most amazing flying he had ever seen, explaining that, quote, every time they got too close to the object, it would slowly accelerate and rapidly accelerate and then move away from them and stop. Then they would take off after it again and the same thing would happen. This went on for about 20 minutes before
before the mysterious object just vanished. As weird as this all was, what was almost weirder was what happened next. Firstly, the headmaster of the school is said to have tried to put a stop to anyone talking about the incident at all, threatening severe punishment to any student or staff who was caught speaking about it, and when the Royal Australian Air Force contacted him, he refused to talk to them about it. There have also been stories of witnesses getting visits from people warning them not to speak of the incident. Andrew explained, quote, when he asked the physical education teacher to describe what she had seen herself so that he could compare it with his own observation, she just wouldn't say anything. Another witness who did talk to Andrew and described what she had seen in great detail just 30 minutes later refused to speak to him and wouldn't say a word. Was this because of the threats from the headmaster, or was something else going on here? This is definitely a strange UFO story that leaves behind a lot of questions. Number 10. Flashing lights in China. I mean, if you see some flashing lights floating around anywhere in China, it might be a UFO or the air might be exploding because the pollutant levels are so high. I had a buddy who was living in Beijing and he said every morning when he would wake up, he would blow his nose and it would be black. That is disgusting. That can't be good for your life expectancy. Well, exploding air or not, these orbs are definitely not a normal occurrence. They were spotted all over the country at different times of day over the course of a single day. They look sort of like the exhaust port on a camouflaged alien ship. It's absolutely nuts. In typical UFO fashion, they're just floating around in the sky. I would assume that if they are aliens, they came here for some sort of surveillance. Maybe they think we're cute like dogs and they just come around to take a bunch of pictures and they're like, oh my god, look at them. They have their own transportation and healthcare systems. They're adorable. Number nine, English UFO sighting. Next, we head to jolly old England where there's flying saucers in the sky and if the internet is right, there's lizard people in the monarchy. This footage was caught right off the M5 highway and it's pretty convincing. We can see what looks like classic flying saucers hovering above the ground. But who knows if this is actually something flying up in the sky or just an optical illusion. Maybe someone just did the most insane frisbee throw of all time and now that thing is just hovering like your girlfriend waiting to steal your fries. But then we see a military fighter jet pass by the object. I don't know about you, but I don't think the military spends millions to take its fighter jets off the ground to look at Riley's epic frisbee launch. And these two fighter jets pass not once, but twice. And then we can see the object do some sort of a spin in the sky. Even though this whole thing was caught on camera and the military clearly got involved, when questioned on the matter, the British military had no comment. Come on guys, just give us a little juice. Number eight, dancing lights. We got some footage that isn't a UFO, but it's definitely something that I've never seen before floating around in the sky. It looks like pure energy that's just balled up and pirouetting through the clouds. I guess it could be some sort of static energy buildup up there in the sky that's just kind of on the loose and frankly I'm not smart enough to know whether that is or is not possible. But it does seem to move in a controlled motion, it kind of swims up and down. And out of all the UFO videos I've watched, I gotta say, this one is the prettiest. I don't think we're gonna make a list of the most stunning unidentified flying objects, but if we did, this would definitely be high on the list. I bet if you could contain this thing like something you could sell to rich people, it would take the place of chandeliers. This one was also spotted in the UK. It seems like there's something going on over there. Unlike our last video, the military doesn't swoop in and take a closer look. There's some people on the internet who claim this video to be a fake. And if you're out there making fake UFO videos, get a better hobby, man. You're clogging up all the authentic UFO footage. Number seven, Splash Zone. Imagine you're a good, God-fearing fisherman in Spain and then you see some crazy thing flying through the sky and it makes you question God and everything you ever trusted. This footage is crazy. It was taken in Spain off the coast of the Galicia region and it shows some sort of UFO blast over a fisherman's boat out in the middle of the ocean and then boom, the whole thing plunges underwater. This is absolutely insane. You see a massive splash from the aircraft entering the water. The speculation around this is that there is secret underwater alien bases. Like duh, that's why we know more about the moon than we do about the ocean floor because the government is hiding all the cool aliens down there and they don't want us to hang out with them. I mean it would be the best place to hide them. Unless you've got a state of the art submarine which is super hard to get on Craigslist, there's no way you're gonna find anything. Number six, 
fire in the sky. Remember that list I made up of top 10 most stunning unidentified flying objects? Well this one would definitely be on the list too. This thing looks super cool. It makes it look like there's a fire in the sky. Now I couldn't dig up that much information on this and I mean this is grainy cell phone camera footage of what might be an alien spacecraft so whatever I dig up off the internet is just probably an educated guest like my own. But it seems like this UFO could be doing one of three things. It could be doing some sort of repairs. Maybe it entered our airspace because it was a safe place to stop and do a little pit stop checkup. The ship could also be doing the opposite on its way down for a crash landing or three it could possibly be dumping something. As you watch through the footage it almost looks like a crop duster leaving a trail behind. I'm sure whatever an alien spaceship is dusting our planet with is harmless. Don't worry about it. Number 5 Boy Scouts You're just trying to be a good boy scout and learn a bunch of stuff about the Catalina channel and then nearly a hundred UFOs appear out of nowhere and your scout master is too busy looking at them instead of teaching you about how to tie new knots or whatever boy scouts do I don't really know. Well this happened to Alan Bergholt in 2013. He saw the sky light up with UFOs and then they started diving into the Catalina channel which further reinforces the possibility of the underwater UFO theory. We've been looking for UFOs in space and they've been right under our noses this whole time. Number 4 Surprise Holy this one is probably one of the best pieces of UFO footage I have ever seen and we're only on number 4. This was caught on some CCTV footage in Australia. It's just some regular old lightning, just some regular old clouds and then out of nowhere there's a goddamn spaceship in the goddamn clouds. Are you seeing this? I bet they thought they were being sneaky with their little camouflage in the clouds. I bet the captain of the spaceship was pissed at the guy who's in charge of parking the ship. Like what the hell Jeff? You parked next to a thunderstorm. They can see us. We're supposed to blend in. Number 3 Military footage. This is the best kind of stuff to find on the old interweb. When you get legit military footage of stuff going down it makes it so much more real. This was shot on January 12th in 2007. Two fighter pilots report seeing something that looks like a floating rock just hanging out around 17,000 feet. A super casual thing for a rock to do. They keep trying to get close so they can get a better look but every time they would get too close it would disappear and then reappear somewhere else like it was using some sort of short range teleportation. It did this a couple times before it completely vanished. What was this thing? Well either a flying rock or something much more advanced. If these aliens are actually real then why don't they just come down and hang out? Tell us about space and stuff and then come try out churros. We've got so many churros. Number 2 Space Disc Space Disc does sound like some sort of futuristic sport thought up in the 90s but we're talking about an actual flying saucer seen in space. This footage was caught off a satellite and you can see some sort of saucer slash disc slash casserole frying pan flying off earth and then disappearing into the black void. This one looks massive like super huge. It's hard to tell because there's obviously not a lot you can use for perspective to see how big this floating space thing is but I'm going to take a guess that this is the biggest one we've had on the list so far. I'm wondering if that means bigger aliens like a bunch of Shaquille O'Neal's running around a spaceship turning knobs and dials saying bleep bloop and wearing jumpsuits. That's how I picture aliens in case anyone's wondering. Number 1 Everything is bigger in Texas. Yet yeah, everything is bigger in Texas, even the UFO sightings. This one comes from Stevensville in the Lone Star State and it's a recorded UFO sighting from 2008. This is where an entire town saw an alien formation that was over a mile long and was moving in perfect formation. It was hundreds of spacecrafts. An Air Force pilot who saw this insane happening said that these ships were moving at speeds of up to 3,000 miles per hour and never broke their perfect parallel lines. 
The Air Force tried to said that they were doing some formation practice with 10 fighter jets that night, but the people were like, nah dude, we saw hundreds of spacecrafts. None of them look like a 1016 fighter jet. This is like when you find out the truth about Christmas and your parents are like, no, Santa did it. Just tell me the truth, dude. I may look stupid, but I'm only a little stupid. Well everyone, that's our list. I hope you all enjoyed it. As always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Also, make sure you follow Most Amazing Top 10 on Instagram and Facebook. We've got a load of more content over there for you to check out, and it's a great way to get to know myself and the other hosts just a little bit better. Until next time, I've been Chaterer and I'm going to lay in bed and wait for the aliens to take me. It's about fast food toys that almost ruined lives back in the day. These toys were just straight up not safe for kids to play with and we're going to break them all down for you today. See you in the next video.